Sin City, Las Vegas, entertainment, food, everything larger than life. And let's not forget what built this city, gambling. Well, you know, there's plenty of gambling in the automotive world also, and the stakes are high. What will be the new trend? Will the public buy our new concept? And so on. Well, we're here because a few hours down the road is the Kia Proving Grounds in California's Mojave Desert. It is here that Kia and its corporate sibling, Hyundai, put their vehicles through grueling torture tests in extreme heat. Well, Kia, like other companies, is, and can we call it gambling, not only on electric cars, but also autonomous vehicles. In short, cars that don't need a driver. Well, this week, Kia's invited automotive journalists from around the world to the Proving Grounds to drive their two electric souls that also double as autonomous vehicles. So is this a gamble when you consider how much money is spent on this technology, or is it indeed our future? Autonomous has, I think, five stages. We're going to be at semi-autonomous, which is where you have to still be in the driver's seat, but the car will largely drive itself way before 2030. Fully autonomous where you can sleep in the back seat, it certainly won't be before 2030, and I don't know if we'll ever get there. You know, I mean, it's gonna require a culture change. As people continue to be more technologically advanced, our products need to be more technologically advanced as well. When we look at life expectancy, it's gonna to grow to 87 years of age. So that's important for us because mobility of people is, is very important. People are staying in their homes longer, yet they need to be able to be mobile. So technologies like autonomous driving are essential to helping that innovation become mainstream in the marketplace. I think at the Consumer Electronics Show, it's important for us to show a lot of our advanced technologies. It's all about bringing new and innovative ideas to market. So for us, there's ADIS, which is Advanced Driver Assistance System. And this system allows drivers to be on the road, even today, and have a lot of, a lot of innovative technologies help them with their driving, whether it's lane departure warning, front crash avoidance, any of those features that can help people be more safe makes us feel like a good, strong partner to the consumers. The big question for me is the ethical one, which is, will the government, seeing that autonomous cars reduce accidents, then say, well, if computers are better drivers than cars, maybe we should ban people from driving their own cars. That is a really much bigger question than we can answer today. But I would say that those that are fearful of autonomous uh, cars, this is exactly what they're fearful of. Technically, the cars are ready. I think we had a good example today with what happened the technology is there. There are a couple of problems if you look in the near future. First of all, climate. We're in the Mojave Desert, conditions are ideal, and all the systems on board work. In Canada, in the winter with ice, snow, sensors, camera, radar, sonar, nothing works. And the automotive industry doesn't have a solution as we speak for this. So it will render all those autonomous vehicles useless for four or five months a year. And especially the simulation when you were falling asleep. <laughs> that, was, that was impressive. Well, the first thing that struck me today is that the whole procedure from now until we get either fully autonomous cars or semi-autonomous cars is going to be very gradual. Uh, how long we stop at stop signs would aggravate most people. Like we stopped the, the, the Kia, electric soul that we were in was programmed to stop for three full seconds. Count them, one, two, three at every stoplight. Try that uh, in front of a whole line of cars and you're gonna get a lot of horns. Right now, because there's no certitude about regulation, about ethical issues, uh, about regulations, I think that all car companies, certainly Kia, is being very cautious about how they program their cars to drive. I think the problem 
is not technology, but will the world be ready to accept autonomous car? That's the big question, I think. I've been in the business a little over 20 years, and I think we've come a long way in the last six or seven years. There's no question. I mean, it seems like just yesterday, Bluetooth was the big phenomenon in cars. Now we're talking about technologies that really help drivers be safer on the road, and I think that's one of the goals of every automotive manufacturer. If we have safer drivers, if we have better technologies, it allows for more people to be more mobile and helps us, ultimately it helps us sell cars. Before all of this is done with all the legal stuff and all the acceptance that has to go with it, I'll probably be sitting somewhere in front of a fire sipping a coffee. <laughs> or something stronger. <laughs> or something stronger. <laughs>some final thoughts in the autonomous vehicle and its future well it has one but not in my lifetime and i'm happy about that why because i do and have always enjoyed the enjoyment of driving however there are those that actually believe that the act of driving can prevent them from doing what they really want to do be it emailing texting eating sleeping and the list goes on you know, this technology is still in its infant stage, but what we saw with Kia was very impressive. I mean, I overheard one journalist while driving in a car mutter, this is crazy. Maybe so, but you know, they probably thought those brothers with the last name Wright were crazy over 100 years ago, and look where we are today.